Hello and welcome. This time we're going to talk about human machine interfaces. What is what are they used for? Well, human machine interfaces are used for letting the human, the operator, operate with a machine, whatever a machine is. Can be as easy as this thing here. Light switch, human machine interface. Yeah? Well, the machine is not that complicated. Uh, it's a contact. Yeah? However, that's the base usually. That's the, usually the base of an HMI is some push buttons. Uh, where I can put some commands in on, off, uh, left, right. Then push buttons might also be some. With, uh, how is it called? Drehknöpfe, uh, yeah. rotating knobs, yeah. knobs where I can turn. Yeah. Then from the machine, I usually have some light, some indicator on, off, turning. Maybe there is some display where it's written the rotations per minute or whatever machine this is. Yeah. Here I have a feedback. I operate, feedback. Huh? I operate, feedback. If I'm not close to the machine, I also need some feedback. So I need some lamps, some things. Yeah, That's very usual. Huh? It's very usual to have some buttons somewhere. Huh? And it's also usual to have some feedback if this command was taken or not. Okay? Here I have an example. Here I have an example of a machine. Well. It's a walkie-talkie, yeah? and there are some push buttons on it. Yeah? And buttons. Turn it on. Yeah? Then I have the feedback. Aha. Yeah? Working. Okay. Push buttons simply. This is kind of human, of human machine interface HMI. Okay. And then. This one, also, everybody of you knows this thing, calculator, okay? Also a lot of push buttons on it. And if I operate it in a certain way, I get out what I want. Yeah? Human machine interface of. Then this thing here, yeah? also very common. Also belongs also human machine interface. But this is a special special knobs. It's an emergency stop knob. Back, stop it. Okay. So these things they are formed in a special way because in an emergency situation we need to operate this safely and quickly. Yeah? So we don't have the time to think. Hey, well, emergency stop! I have to press this button and hold this. And no, no. Back, ready. Okay. So there are quite a number of buttons and feedbacks, lamps, and so on. Can be a nice operating system. Sometimes this is not enough. Yeah? Sometimes then the operating, the human machine interfaces are getting a little bit more complicated, like this, for instance. Yeah, joystick style thing. Yeah, if it's built in somewhere. Not only in a game controller, but maybe to control a crane or something like this. Huh? Also, human machine interface. Huh? There is a certain rule, of course. The more complex the machine is, the more buttons I need to to operate this machine. Okay. And this led to situations where we really end up in, in a tremendous amount of buttons to operate our unit, to operate our machine. Yeah. It's a paper mill or I don't know, something big. Yeah. A lot of buttons, a lot of values displayed somewhere and so on. 
huge walls full of information. Yeah? We lost a little bit the overview. Okay? So there was then the task with more complex machines, there is the task to shrink or to filter somehow the information and the operatable buttons I have. Yeah? For instance, if you're thinking of a, a, a operator manual of operator panel of a steam locomotive. Yeah? Ooh, everywhere gauches, everywhere some wheels and I can turn off and on somewhere and this and I have to light the fire and yeah? And then if you look now into modern train, yeah, some screens, one maybe one telephone, yeah, and, and one joystick like thing, and that's it. Yeah. And I mean an Intercity Express is for sure more complex than an old steam engine. Yeah. What is then what needs to be done then simply yeah, is really, really, really take care about the usability. Okay. This means even if I have a complex machine yeah, and if I reduce the elements of operation, yeah, I really have to take care that this reducing the elements is not blocking the usability of the machine, yeah, how easy it can be operated. This is from the uttermost importance. Yeah? You can build a machine which is perfect, which is doing the job like no other machine ever could. Yeah? And if this machine is not operatable, it will not get sold. Okay? So you really have to spend time in the user interface, design of the user interface, to to walk through all possible channels, yeah? what information is needed by the user at exactly this point in time, what might be the next steps he needs to take. Yeah? And if I need to take steps and I have to find them in this third submenu somewhere, yeah. okay, usability is of great importance. And also, that we are following some rules, okay? We follow some rules, then the operation is is a little bit more easy. Okay? Those rules are, for instance, for light, light things, yeah? alarm, alarm or warning signal, emergency signal is red. Yeah? A, a red light means emergency. Yeah. A yellow light means a hey, attention. Yeah. There is something maybe wrong. Yeah. Attention. Yeah. Red means oof, dangerous. Okay. Green means everything's fine. Everything's within normal parameters. Okay. So this is the colors of the light. A blue light means usually, uh, well, take some actions. Yeah. This is the next thing to do, probably. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> if you have an operating knob or button or something like this, yeah, a red button is the button for emergency. Yeah. Red button is the button for emergency. And you should never make a start button in red. Okay. This is simply a no-go, yeah? red start button. Then a yellow button usually means restart or or end unusual behavior or something like this. Yeah? Yellow buttons are handled with care. Okay? Blue buttons usually make a reset somehow, reset some errors. Yeah? Green buttons usually mean you go to usual state. Yeah? And of course, like I said, red buttons are not for start. For start, yeah? green buttons are not for stop for sure. Okay? What can be used for for start to stop? Usually, 
white buttons or white lights are neutral, white lights are neutral things, and white buttons are usually for start, black buttons are for stop. Okay. It's often the case that we also use some symbols. Let's look at this. There's the symbol, a O and a 1. Yeah? So this means this is the on-off button. Everybody does understand this, right? On-off button. Yeah? And here we have already an example yeah, of how to, to reduce the usability, yeah? or to, no, not the usability, how to reduce the complexity of these buttons. Yeah? Here, this button I need often, yeah? because here I'm sending. If I press this button, I'm sending now hello, hello uh, to whoever is hearing me now. Uh, here, this button, for instance, is, call, is used for calling the other person. Uh, however, this has a double function. If I just press a short, then I call everybody on, the, on this same channel. Uh, and if I press long, now it's, uh, the keys are locked. Yeah. This is often the case. Yeah. <sighs> Sometimes it's even annoying. Yeah. Sometimes it's even annoying if some buttons are used in several ways. Yeah. This is where I said, please think about it, what you do. Yeah. human machine interfaces modern human machine interfaces use things like this touch screens touch screens are nice no question about this because they combine somehow the feedback and the operation the buttons and the feedback they are combined however they have some also some disadvantages. Yeah, if it's for instance uh, a machine which is getting dirty, it's getting dirty. Then you have probably dirty hands, and then you have to smear around the screen, and then you cannot read anything. That's something. Yeah? Some disadvantage. Other disadvantages. If I want to press a button, I have to cover this button, and if the button is labeled, yeah, then I cover the label. So usually if the button label is above the button, I can press, no issue. Yeah? And then there is also, I have to look where I touch, I have to look. Yeah? I cannot feel it. Yeah? There are now modern touch screens with a little bit, yeah, but it's always a little bit of work around. Yeah? Also with these turning knobs, yeah? I can already touch it and then in the right moment, press it or an, an knob. I touch it and in the right moment press it. I cannot touch a touch screen because I press it already. Okay, so there are some things I have to consider when using touch screens. Well, I think that's everything I want to tell you now about human machine interfaces because it's this usability topic. This is a big topic. Yeah, I mean. The cars, yeah? also cars, the cockpit, that's a human machine interface. Yeah? And also there, yeah? it's, it's pretty annoying yeah? if you have to select the third and fourth level of submenu to, I don't know, uh, turn the wiper faster. Yeah? So there are some elements which needs to be, it needs to function. And, you know, there are different types of communication and also in the car you cannot only look at the touch screen or screen you have to look on the road a lot of things are in there yeah? so just want to make you a little bit sensitive around this yeah that these things are important and there are also rules like i said red yellow green blue things and so on yeah there are rules you have to follow them yeah because if you don't you will not sell your product. So, next time we're going to talk about machine-to-machine -machine interface. 
this is not that psychological. This is more technical. This is more our style, I would say. At least mine. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.